It is, and I'm not going to take credit for it. Uh, if I had to guess and, and just give my analysis of it, he's found out how to block out the noise like he did last year. You know, he's not worrying about what people are saying. He's not letting anybody get inside his, uh, his head, and he's just going to work every single day and, and just playing, not trying to do too much. Understanding that he's got a ton of weapons around him. He's got a lot of, uh, a lot of support. That he doesn't have to do everything by himself. And I think that's just allowed him to just go out and just play uh, with, the, with the cool and calm that, that we're used to. Any update on Amari or Justin? You know, I haven't gotten an actual update. Coach Sweeney will, will give you more detail on that. You know, the, the early thoughts is those guys will be okay. Um, but Coach Sweeney will give you more detail. Oh, well, actually, Coach Sweeney just talked about it. About T's awesome. game, obviously. He had to step up. Uh, you know, proud of, proud of T. And, and, uh, and T was really quiet around the hotel, especially today. And, and I went up to it right before we got on the bus, and I said, are you okay? You know, everything all right? He said, Coach, I'm just locked in. Uh, and that's when I knew that he was going to come out and, and, uh, and play well. Uh, because, again, he, he's, a, he's a guy that's had a lot of success, but he understands for, for his team to accomplish what we want to accomplish and for him to individually accomplish uh, what he has set out to do, uh, that he has to have a certain level of, of focus and intensity in the day he had that. Really happy for him. The throw to Frank Lance and Trevor showing a little patience, waiting for it. He flashes NFL throw, NFL catch. You know, and, and really proud of their protection because because that was at a point there where we needed to, to solidify the protection. He had all the time that he needed. You know, they jumped into a you know more of a two man deal, which is, is the call is, is built more for zone. But you know, he went through his progression. He actually went went from the field back to the boundary and then came back to the field uh, and delivered a strike. And, and really happy for uh, for Frank, you know, to make that to make that play. It was good to see him and Joe both get in the end zone and just the pure emotion. Enjoy those are guys that have been working, you know, quite, haven't quite had the success, of, uh, so to speak, statistically. But those guys are just getting better every single week. So happy for him. Is this open day as well as you're playing? I mean, would you rather play next week? Obviously, you have no choice, but or does this come at a good time to kind of heal up some bumps and bruises before that last run? You know, I think that it gives us a chance to, to, to get some guys who might be a little bit banged up, get them back healthy, gives us a chance to, to really study ourselves, gives us a chance to get a good uh, you know good perspective on who South Carolina is. Uh, because at the end of the day, this is a season in itself. Uh, and to have two weeks to get, get prepared to play, especially going down into their environment, I mean, it doesn't matter what the record is or, or how they play up to this point, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a war. So, so I see the positive in that, and it also gives our kids a, a chance to, to kind of get away a little bit, and, and then you know, enjoy. You know, they, that's one thing too about college football is you know, they sacrifice a lot. They give up their Christmas, they give up their, their Thanksgiving. So at least this this year they'll have a chance to go home and, and see some family, and then come back here and, and spend Thanksgiving with us. Tony, there's always a lot of talk this time of the year about eye test and you know how, how good you have to look at certain points. You guys have now. Going over 45 and six straight games and four straight now over 50. You feel like you're passing the eye test? You know, that's that's for the people that are watching that use the eye test to, to determine. We're just focused on being the best version of ourselves. Uh, and the great thing about today is, is obviously we had we had some su su success statistically, but we still left some opportunities out there. So that was going to be some some nuggets we can put in front of the guys to keep them humble, keep them hungry. And you know, for us, at the end of the day, we just we just want to have an opportunity to uh, to play into the postseason. And, and right now, we really can't focus on that because you know you, before you do that, you gotta you gotta take care of business in the state championship. And again, as I said before, this is a season in itself, and this game right here means a lot to a lot of people. Uh, so that's what we're going to have our guys focused on, playing our best. And if we Keep you know being bringing the best version of ourselves, then then the rest will take care of itself. So there's no talk, coach. Don't say you know, do this, do that. Got to pass it on this. No, because that that would be a contradiction to what has gotten us here as a program. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna come right back in on Monday. It's gonna be windshield mentality. Uh, we're gonna focus on on South Carolina. There's gonna be plenty of opportunity that, that we'll be able to challenge this offense. We had you know more sacks than we, than we were used to giving up. We had more negative yards than we've given up all year. So there's gonna be some things that we can challenge these guys in the pursuit of you know, playing their best game. And that's all we're trying to do is each week figure out how to play our best game. And it goes back to blocking out the noise and, and respecting the process. So if we start talking about things you know, beyond what we can control, then, then that's not who our program is. So you said T was like seemingly relaxed today. No, he just was. He just was was quiet to himself. Um, not that he's a, a jovial guy. Not that he jokes around a lot, but he just had a different look to him, you know. And and, and so I went up and asked him, just make sure. I said, T, you okay? Because again, these are young people. You never know what they got going on. They got so many different distractions. So many people pulling on them. So so you never know what they're going through. I just wanted to make sure that, that I saw a little bit of a change in his in his body language, uh, but it was for the right reason. And he was just getting himself mentally focused to go out and play at a high level. What point in the day was that? You know, that was earlier, right? Actually, you know, last probably an hour or two before we left the uh, left the hotel. Yeah, but he was he was he was locked in. What's that dynamic like when you have guys, you know, today's senior day, but there are some other guys who, you know, will have another year of eligibility, but will also be eligible for the draft? What's that dynamic like for them? On 
You know, you know, don't really talk about it. Uh, you know, I know you're referring to probably uh, definitely on offense. You got T and T and Travis, and this very well could have been their last game. We don't know, uh, but for those guys, just challenge them to, to be at their best because the seniors that are here that we know it's their last go round. We need to be at our best to honor them the right way. Do you like having two weeks to prepare for that big rivalry game? You know, I do. It just just gives me an opportunity to really, really, um, you know, identify some tendencies. You know, see if there's anything that we can pick up on tape. Uh, and then again, you know, when you're in a game week, <laughs> it's balls to the wall. Uh, and at least here you got a couple extra days just to kind of really, really uh, get your eyes on them and have a good feel for who their personnel is. There was a time in the trial where both teams were full of South Carolina and Georgia kids. Kind of, everybody knew. Now you're recruiting nationally, but do you feel like that everybody still gets what the rivalry oh, they're going, means? They know, they know what this one means. Um, and I told my guys, you know, as we broke there in the, uh, in the locker room that, that I got two uh, Carolina grads in my family. Right, so this one here is personal, just like it's going to be personal to everybody else, you know, from the state of South Carolina. And these guys have really, really done a good job of, of embracing all the traditions uh, of being a Clemson Tiger, and so they definitely know uh, how uh, how important this game is to the uh, to our to our fan base. Do you remember when uh, Dabo said, I don't know why uh, God made me the Clemson coach when Steve Spurrier is the head coach of South Carolina? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if I remember that. But that sounds like something Coach Sweeney, uh, Coach Sweeney would say. But, but uh, you know, ton of respect for, for their program. And, and obviously, you know, not going to pay attention to what their record is, what the stats say. Uh, those guys, I've recruited some of those those guys. You know, Javon Kinlaw is a guy from my recruiting area. Man, there's, there's probably not, even though I don't see him on a daily basis, but there's probably not a, a young man I'm more proud of, just even from a distance, just to see uh, where where he was uh, when I was recruiting him to where he is now, just the turnaround that he's made in his life. And, you know, he's on the cusp of, of, of being an NFL draft pick. And I'm really, really proud for him. I mean, R.J. Roderick was another guy that recruited. So, uh, or Trey Smith, uh, a, lot, a lot of the guys, you know, he recruited Shai Smith. So a lot of those guys we know, we have a relationship with Taven Feaster. You know, he's down there. Um, so... So a lot of respect for the program. We know we're going to get their best shot. So we have to do a great job of, of channeling the emotion and channeling in the right direction and put in you know the work required to prepare us to go play our best. Have you kept in touch with Tavian at all this year? You know, not 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 personally, uh, just because want to respect the uh, the rules with the NCAA. But I know some of the guys have. You know, Travis him and Travis are still close. I know him and Wrench are talking back and forth. And you know, everything that I've heard has been positive. Um, you know, hate that he's he's banged up a little bit, but I'm sure he's going to do everything he can to to be back for this game. And, you know, I have nothing bad to say about. I mean, he's one of mine. You know, Taven is still one of mine. He graduated from Clemson. He, uh, he man, he gave me his his heart, uh, his blood, sweat, and tears for three years. And man, I'm very, very appreciative of that. So, so, so wishing him the best. But, but I know our guys are going to be geared up to compete against. Him. As a staff, how do y'all go about like with Tua going down today, and now he's out for the year? I don't know if you saw that or not. But how, as a staff, how do y'all decide when when to leave guys in, when to when to pull? You know, that's that's, that's Coach Sweeney's Coach Sweeney's decision. Uh, obviously, he's he's in control of personal. And, and when he feels like uh, the game's under control, or he feels like the guys have, have done what he's what he's looking for out of them, then he'll uh, then he'll tell us that we need to get some other guys in the game. Up until then, we're just you know, we're just coaching our you know our tails off. It doesn't matter who's in the game.